Sacramento, right? This this brother has a long history in my city, musically right. and and otherwise. You know what I mean? So I want to go back to the beginning a little bit. Now I know you're from Sacramento, but tell me about your your history in the Bay Area. Did you live in the Bay at all at all when you were like a young dude? I was actually born in Oakland. Mm, okay. And born in Oakland, California. You know, a lot of my family are natives from Oakland. And I uh, was one of the pieces of the family members that, you know, kind of our section, we, we transitioned to the SAC and we became the SAC brand in the early 80s. You know what I'm saying? We moved up here, 85, 86. You know what I'm saying? Uh, came to the Meadowview area. You know, uh, me and my brothers, my relative, Big Tape, Big Drugs was already there. So we kind of already had a foundation in the gardens and in, the, in that Meadowview community over there. And uh, you know what I'm saying? That's been home ever since. You know, I mean, I, I kind of lived in different sections throughout Sacramento. So um, I was able to familiarize with different communities growing up, going to different high schools. And, you know, I went to Wussy Wood. I went to Hiram Johnson. I went to Howe Avenue. I went to Dyer Kelly. I went to Burbank, mm -hmm. you know, and different junior highs and them different high schools going to have you in different neighborhoods and different hoods. So you're going to stand up or you're going to fall down, you know. And I pretty much stood up at all the local, uh, you know, Sacramento uh, high schools, me and you, we did Burbank. You know, I, I didn't like, I wanted to use these hands on niggas. So they, they ended up putting me out of there, you know what I mean? The first, the ninth grade freshman, you know, and then I was sent off to Hiram Johnson, you know, yeah. to deal with that area of, of youth that was growing up in that community, which was a mixed capsule, uh, Midtown, East Side, you know what I mean? Whatever, whatever, you know, I just put my back against the wall and uh, deal with JDK do wherever he go. And I got a lot of, I built actually a lot of friends from, um, you know, moving around, you know what I mean? In these different, you know, uh, school districts and stuff like that. But anywhere, you know, my feet landed, I've always had great relationships. The Bay, I mean, still to this day, you know what I mean? They never forgot that my birth certificate said Oakland. So when I crossed mm -hmm. the bridge, you know what I'm saying? I'm able, I got a key to the city over there. You know what I mean? When I'm in this section over here, you know, it's all about respect. So I earned that, bro. You know, my brother, Roop Dog, for those of you who don't know, was one of the first to put it down out here in SAC. Um, mm -hmm. I, I learned a lot from that experience, you know what I mean? 11, 12 years old, growing up under that umbrella, you know, him and my bro. Um, and, and we all thugged it out, which inspired a lot of more people that um, you hear today in the Sacramento community that's rapping. Like a mm -hmm. lot of that yeah. are under our umbrella because we was the first. You know, I wasn't the, I wasn't the second or the third. Like I was one of the first young guys in North, Northern California, period, that was going at it with big wigs. You know what I'm saying? Like I actually broke a record for um, being one of the most active young hip hop artists, you know, at a certain pe uh, time period. I believe that time period was like uh, 93 and 94 mm. because being so young and being in the entertainment business, you know what I'm saying? I was, I was featuring with the big wigs and all of that kind of shit. And all one thing about it is all history is documented. It is. If yep. you're a real Sacramento cat, then you know, I was on who put sack on the map. I was on yep. Sac Kings. I was on Mar Mitchell and Mays album. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. 22. I was on Shitty Crew Trufino, a, uh, uh, AK Shots Out to Trav. You feel me? I was on his project. So those were a lot of the projects that were coming out in the early 90s. You know what I'm saying? And I That's was true. a I wasn't even supposed to be around be around them, them niggas. You know what I'm saying? But I, I kicked in the door and uh, uh, made sure I was a part of everything. You know, BG. Shots out to BG. You gotta mm. be. Drop that album in 93. We was neck to neck. You know what I'm saying? I, shit, I was hype manning for him. Yeah, 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 and I always yeah. found I always found my way about this, with this music shit, being a young hustler, and what that did is developing all of these uh, good relationships and watching the game at a young age. It helped me start my needed now clothing brand and my needed now records and and, and sack report. I was prepared to be an independent entrepreneur because I was trained. Yeah, I was trained mm. to go. Mm. Hey, that make that makes a lot of sense. And let me tell y'all a story real quick, y'all. Right, so. Like I said, me and JDK met in high school, right? And a quick story, because everything he's saying, I just remember what he embodied as a young person. Because here's the, the dynamic, right? I'm a sophomore. He's a freshman. We meet, right? So I'm like, I <laughs> I grew up in the hood, y'all, but I was, I've always been more of a square nigga. I'm messing with the chicks. I'm playing basketball. I'm familiar with the environment. Right. I've never been a participant, right? And I'm And I stand on that, right? JDK, something different. So when we meet, even though I got brothers and older people around me who was in the shit, <laughs> I, <laughs> I used to talk to JDK, y'all. And again, he a freshman, I'm a sophomore. Right. He was so seasoned. Right. With everything he was talking about. 
Like you can you can tell he was with everything he was talking about in the same energy I seen as him as a kid. I see him put that same energy into the music, into the clothing. Every time I see you, everything you're doing, you putting that same energy into it. So I got to give you love for that family because you've been 100 since I know you. You know what I mean? Man, it's a growth trend. It's called growth and transition. Mm -hmm. And like black man, we got to understand we come from these communities where we're not provided the best opportunities. So we have to look into ourselves and really dig into our hearts. When I was coming to school, bro, I was coming from the trap, bro. I was really coming from around the corner in Meadowview, you, you know what I'm saying, doing that shit, you feel me? So I have a pocket full of money. Y'all know, you, Johnny, all of them. I was treating niggas to lunch, mm -hmm. which y'all want with a pocket full of that, you know what I mean? So it's like coming coming to school, I was really dealing with reality. You know, I was re I really had a, mm -hmm. a, a, a really situation where I had to, you know, I, I was forced to be a young adult before it was my time to be a young adult. Mm -hmm. So when I, you know, I, I was politicking by the seventh grade. You know, sixth grade, I was already politicking. So by the time I met y'all in ninth grade, bro, I was around grown men that were, you know, 10 and 20 years older than me and, and shit like that. And I was trained up under that umbrella. You know what I mean? So my level of maturity was like nobody in school understood me, even from mm. from 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 elementary to junior high school. I, I was already like that when I was at Howe Avenue. I, you know, I had my own group of uh, uh, individuals that was riding up under me in fifth grade. You know what I mean? Then when I, I transitioned to seventh grade, it was the same thing at Wussy Wood. I had niggas up against the wall, then I came to Burbank. So I, I I was so advanced that everybody wanted to listen to what I was saying. They was like, who is this kid that's like an adult, but he's really, a, you know what I mean? He's really a child. So um, through that experience of, you know, just being in that life, I was able to grow. I was able to say, let me use some of these things that I learned that weren't for the greater good and, uh, you know, package myself up as a young adult and put this shit into this energy into something positive, like a label, like a magazine company, or just, you know, um, really just taking my own dream and putting it in my hands and not complaining about anything or whatever. I was one of the first people from my hood that actually put his own money up for everything. Like I put all of my albums out. I paid, mm -hmm. you know, for 24, uh, 25 issues for a magazine. And I never really looked for nobody to drop a bag on me. I'm not going to say I did it all by myself. I mean, that wouldn't be true. You know, I had a lot of support and people that were there for me, but I wasn't waiting for a, a label or a baller or nothing like that to do it. You know, every every coin I stacked, man, it went into my grind and my hustle. That's mm -hmm. why I created Needed Now Records, because it's, I embodied that, bro. I really lived that experience. And uh, definitely. five albums later, you know, fifth project later, you know what I'm saying? I mean, I have no complaints, bro. It's, mm -hmm. it's a God-given uh, situation. It's blessed. We don't never bring negativity out. When we bring people out, we want you to feel safe. We want mm -hmm. you to feel like you're among some good people. You know, I never put my people in the cross, and that's why me and you have a great understanding to this day. And, um, man, I'm real proud of you, you know, because what you're doing is a positive platform for fathers, for artists, for people, uh, black people who may be miseducated uh, uh, and don't know about some of these things, uh, young adults who may be fathers that need that level of of um of guidance because you've been through it hand on you know through mm -hmm. your experience you know i mm -hmm. watch you like have uh uh be a young be a parent as a young adult mm -hmm. yep. i'm your real homie so i watch yeah. you nigga with at, at 16 13 